Hey friends, welcome back. So during the winter of 2022, there was a lot of concern about the rising hospitalizations and how that should mean that we should continue to implement all of these sort of safety precautions, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, and much more. But what I want to share with you is an uncoupling between the rising COVID-19 cases and severity of COVID-19 and associated deaths. And I think this is important because this is data that we should have had a long time ago. And I think it really emphasizes something that hasn't been talked a lot by the health experts, and that is we should improve upon people's chronic disease risk factors because what we're seeing here is individuals that have been vaccinated and hospitalized for COVID-19 are there for other reasons or because they have other underlying health conditions that are the underlying reason why they're hospitalized and they might have an incidental COVID case. And I think this is important because Many policymakers, many politicians were really trying hard to continue lockdowns and restrictions and mask and vaccine mandates. But what the data actually shows is Omicron is actually much less severe than all the other different variants that have occurred. So I want to share this paper here. This was published in uh, The Lancet, actually. The title of the paper here is Uncoupling of All Cause Excess Mortality from COVID-19 Cases in the U.S. And so they were looking at cases here uh, in, in Boston, in Massachusetts. And essentially what they found, and they were looking at viral load and wastewater treatments, uh, testing and all of this. And what they found is there was a dramatic reduction in COVID-19 associated excess deaths linked with Omicron. Now that's very important because, you know, Still, there's people, I see them all the time, they're wearing their face masks in their car and they're walking outside with a mask on and all this sort of stuff because they sort of believe that it's still like March of 2020, but it's not. This is a totally different viral variant. And so um, if you're doing all the masking in your car and so forth, well, are you exercising? Are you eating the real food? Because that, as the study talks about, might be one of the main reasons why people are being hospitalized is because they have underlying health issues that they've ignored. And so let's talk about this. Okay, what they found here uh, in looking at a bunch of different data sets is there was a, um, a dramatic decrease in, in per population of excess deaths linked with COVID. So the excess deaths were from other factors. And essentially what they found is that they say here, as evidenced by corresponding substantial spikes in SARS-CoV-2 wastewater levels and changes in testing volume, uh, this corresponded with a 97.3 reduction in excess mortality compared to weeks prior, compared to other waves. And so... What they found is that there was a dramatic reduction in mortality because the viral variant is significantly more mild. And I think, again, this might sound like old news to you, but there are still so many people that are canceling travel plans, that are scared to be with friends and family, that are making friends and family take COVID tests and all this sort of stuff, but they forget that Omicron is is a much less virulent to pathogenic variation of the original strain. And so we shouldn't continue to behave as though it's March 2020. And so what they found is that there's an uncoupling of excess mortality from new COVID-19 cases. And, and this is linked with increased immunity, decreased virulence. And they say leaving, if not most individuals at high risk with substantial protection against even severe outcomes from COVID-19. And again, I think this is important because they do talk about part of the reason why some people are being hospitalized is because they have other health issues and they have maybe an incidental COVID infection or those underlying health issues are, are being exploited by this relatively more benign variant. And so the take-home message from this is, number one, this data has been around, okay, and the policymakers, for whatever reason, chose to ignore it. Uh, number two, we should focus on underlying health. Uh, many people, again, that are still, you know, people will say, well, there's people still dying from COVID. Yeah, there's people that still die from the flu. There's people that still die from, you know, tripping and falling because they're so weak and they can't get up. There's people that die from the common cold, right? That doesn't mean that we need to implement society level top down restrictions to save all lives. We should be suggesting and encouraging and incentivizing exercise health, walking, sleep, stress reduction. We should be making, you know, maybe tax credits for gym memberships, or if you can sort of validate that you're getting at least 150 minutes per week of moderate to vigorous physical activity that maybe you get a little tax break, or maybe you get some sort of incentive. Where's the incentives, right? We give out free donuts if you get a shot. We gave out free beer, even in, in New York City, free marijuana if you show proof of vaccination. So friends, I think it's important that we understand the data is here. We have a less virulent strain of the virus. And the people that are struggling with this have underlying health issues that the policymakers and the public health officials and themselves have completely ignored. So we need, if we want to keep people safe, we need to keep people healthy. 
That's the bottom line. And so this data shows that there's a dramatic uncoupling between um, the rising COVID cases and excess deaths linked with COVID. But again, we're not, we're not really hearing about this from the media. So I wanted to share this with you. This was published in The Lancet. If you have a friend that's so completely terrified from this thing and won't leave their house unless they get a COVID test, they should realize that we're dealing with a complete, completely different version of the pathogen. And that version is, yeah, it's more transmissible, but it's less pathogenic. So friends, how to be safe is, is to focus on metabolic health, to become more physically fit, to reduce your stress, improve your sleep, and circadian rhythms, and, and much more. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'll link this article below, and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.